Sin Yuan Fan is going to be our next speaker. Uh, he is associate professor and master tutor at the Institute of Advanced Synthesis of Nanjing Technical University. He's been working in different countries before being at this university, including Spain. Specifically, he was at the uh, Institute of Chemical Research of Catalonia, uh, IFIC, in Spain. He's uh, researching in different topics, including bioorthogonal chemistry. This is the development of chemical tools for living systems, such as the manipulation of living proteins, the development of new drugs, and so on. He's also uh, interested in photocatalytic chemistry, specifically in the uh, development, in the study, sorry, of new and more efficient photocatalytic reactions. And he's also uh, investigating in catalytic chemistry of methyls, uh, specifically doing research and applying uh, new efficient reactions catalyzed by transition methyls. Uh, his research has resulted so far in 19 publications. Uh, he is a first author in nine of them, and they've been published in um, high quality uh, journals, uh, such as the Accounts of Chemical Research and Gevante Chemie or Chemical Science. And today, uh, his talk is entitled Biorthogonal Chemical Tools or Protein Manipulation in Living Cells. Okay, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, hola a todos. Buenas tardes. Mi llamo Xin Yue Fan. Y soy de Nanjing Tech Universidad in China. Okay, so no in English. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, so today my uh, presentation uh, will be about uh, bisogonal chemistry reaction. Uh, uh, the title is Bisogonal Chemical Tools for Protein Manipulation in Living Cells. Um, so uh, we all know that proteins uh, consist of 20 uh, natural amino acids. But uh, in uh, 2000, uh, Professor Peter Schultz in Scripps Institute uh, has developed uh, a technology called uh, uh, genetic code expansion technology. Using this technique, uh, we can uh, insert uh, unnatural amino acid into protein. Uh, so, uh, so uh, my work is mainly uh, uh, about uh, unnatural amino acid. So what I'm doing is trying to design different structure with this um, natural amino acid to uh, for the protein study or for um, uh, for 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 yeah for protein study in living systems. So today my uh, talk will 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 be about uh, three projects. The first one is about the design of a multifunctional uh, unnatural amino acid. The second one is about uh, uh, activation, uh, protein activation in living cells. And uh, the last one will be about uh, chemical synthesis of this unnatural amino acid. It's a, it is a um, methodology, uh, organic synthesis methodology. Okay. So the first project, okay. So the first one is about the multifunctional uh, un unnatural amino acid. Mm, so, uh, so what can you do? Uh, when you incorporate uh, uh, natural amino acid into protein, uh, you can do many things. For example, if you want to know where is your protein in the living cells, you can incorporate uh, a, a, a UAA with this kind of functional group. And after that, you can use click chemistry to, to, to label your protein with a uh, fluorophore. So in this way, you can see where is your protein. And if you want to know uh, uh, what is the substrate of your uh, protein, you can incorporate uh, this kind of uh, amino acid. And this functional group is uh, photosensitive. When you treat this, uh, this, this, this group, uh, uh, it, it will become a very active um, intermediate, and it will uh, capture the, 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 the uh, substrates of your protein. So in this way, you can know uh, what is your um, protein's substrates. 
And uh, also, if you want to know what is the function of your protein, you can incorporate this kind of uh, UAA. This, this group can be, uh, can be um, deprotected in living cells. And uh, uh, this deprotection reaction can be used to activate the function of the protein. So, and uh, actually, th uh, there are many um, unnatural amino acids being uh, developed, uh, but uh, all of them are single functional, like, uh, like, uh, like, like, uh, like, like this. So, uh, so, we want to, so we, we want to know, can we design a multifunctional UAA that it can do all these three things? So this is, is our work. So this is the design. It is based on lysine, and we incorporate, uh, we, we introduce this red part. Uh, you can see that it has a azide group. This azide group can do a clear chemistry. Uh, this, uh, so you can do the uh, protein labeling. And uh, the, the, the ben, uh, uh, azide phenyl group uh, has, um, uh, how to say, has a photosensitivity. When you treat with UV light, it will become a very sensitive inter uh, 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 intermediate and it will uh, capture the um, substrates. So you can do photo cross-linking with this part. And more interestingly, the whole red part will be deprotected when you treat uh, this uh, UAA with tricyclooctane. And uh, in this way, you can activate your protein in living cells. So we hope that uh, this UAA can do all these three things uh, in, 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 in living systems. So first, we synthesize this UAA, uh, and then we uh, incorporate this UAA into uh, proteins, like uh, we can incorporate the UAA into proteins in mammalian cells or in in uh, cells, and the protein mass confirms that uh, it, is, uh, it is correct. So after this, we have to prove this, that uh, these functions uh, work properly in living cells. So the first uh, uh, is about, um, um, is about um, uh, protein labeling. So we choose uh, EGFR to, 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 to prove this function. We incorporate this UA here, and uh, after that, we, we add a, a fluorophore with, uh, with this group, and. Uh, and after this click reaction, we can see that the CY5 red color is here. This is a living cell. And uh, uh, so this result uh, uh, proves that uh, the full, um, protein labeling works well. And the second one is about uh, photo cross leaking. So this time we choose uh, HDEA protein. Um, uh, under pH7, HDEA uh, is a dimer, but other pH uh, two or pH one, it will become a, uh, it will um, uh, it will combine to the proteins that uh, that it uh, uh, protect. So you can see that other pH seven, when we uh, when we treat these uh, cells using UV light, it's only dimer here, but uh, other pH two. If we treat these cells with UV light, you can see that we can see many, uh, many bands that uh, uh, is uh, protein that uh, HDA protect. So this results prove that uh, the foot cross linking works well. And the last one is about uh, protein activation. Uh, this time we choose uh, firefly uh, luciferase. Uh, this protein has a key lysine in, it, in, it is, uh, in its active site. So if we replace the lysine with our PABK, uh, of course, it, uh, it will lose its function. So, but if we add this tricyclooctane, the protein, the, the right part will uh, be protected and, uh, uh, and it will give a wide type uh, flor uh, flor uh, uh, floris. So, uh, so in this way, we can activate the protein. So this is the results. We can control the acti activity of the protein by the concentration of, or by the uh, time. 
and finally, we also um, can control the uh, uh, the cell signaling uh, transduction using this activation. For example, we can activate the kinase SARC. In this way, we can upregulate the uh, cell signaling. And uh, we can also uh, activate um, a bacter uh, bacterial effector, OSPF. If we activate this protein, we can, we can downregulate the uh, cell signaling transduction. So this is the first work. The second work is about um, uh, 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 protein activation quickly. So uh, in 2014, Professor Chen has shown that uh, uh, this reaction can be used to activate protein, but it is very slow. So we want to study this reaction to make this, re uh, make this, reac make this reaction faster. So this is a study. I will not talk about the details, but uh, after the system study, we have found that about this reaction, we have found uh, some uh, conclusions. The first conclusion is that uh, uh, the, the smaller substitutes, this is the uh, substitutes, the smaller substitutes on the tetrazine shows much faster decay rate. The second one is that electron donating group slows down the first step. And uh, the, the third one is electron withdrawing group facilitates the first first step, but uh, uh, but uh, hinders the second step. So with these conclusions, we, uh, we, we 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 thought that maybe we could design um, as, uh, asymmetric uh, tetrazine that may uh, make this reaction much faster. So this is our design. We introduce uh, electron withdrawing group to tr try to fast the first group, uh, the the first step. And then we, uh, we, we keep a um, small R group here just to make sure that the second step uh, goes well. So this is the design. And then we synthesize a series of the asymmetric tetrazine and the test them, first test the decay rate on small uh, molecules. You can see that our asymmetric tetrazine shows much faster rate, but uh, the symmetric, like uh, dimethyl or dipyrimidyl, uh, shows much uh, slower rate. So this means that our design is um, is correct. And after that, we also uh, test in living cells, trying to activate proteins. From this here, you can see that our asymmetric tetrazine shows much faster decay rate than the uh, symmetric version. And uh, after publication of this work, the, uh, it, shortly after, it was followed by a um, um, uh, uh, castering group in uh, Netherlands. Uh, they use our uh, asymmetric tethering to activate a T cell. Uh, this is the publication. So the third one is about uh, synthesis of the unnatural amino acid. Um, we know that uh, amines are electrophiles. But uh, we found that under some photocatalysis uh, uh, conditions, it will become a nucleophilic intermediate. So the first work is about this, but it's not um, uh, the topic of today. And uh, we thought that uh, how about we use CO2 as electrophile? If we use CO2 as electrophile, we can synthesize unnatural amino acid very easily. So this results. We do the reaction, and it seems that it works very well. We can synthesize the Unnatural amino acid using CO2 as the reagents, using uh, using visible light as the energy source. The, there are many advantages of this uh, reaction. So first, uh, we use visible light. So in this way, we can use sunlight in, uh, uh, as uh, as the energy source, and uh, and also we use uh, the um, uh, we and also we use. Uh, low pressure of CO2, we, can, we just use uh, CO2 below here. And the third one is that uh, the products pre precipitates from the reaction system. You can see that, um, this is a picture, you can see that before the reaction, this is a very clear solution. And we just need to put uh, CO2 below in the reaction uh, tube, and then we steer the reaction under sunlight after 14 hours, the product precipitates here, and after a simple filtration, you can get your product very easily. So we have submitted this paper, it, it is under review. 
so in summary, uh, we are mainly um, working on the chemical, um, well, the biosorgonal chemical tools for the protein studies. For example, if you want to study your uh, a target protein, where is your protein, uh, what is the function, or what is your substrates, you may think about our multifunctional uh, UAA. This is a, a very simple tool. If you want to activate a protein very quickly in your living systems, you may think about our asymmetric uh, tetrazine. And uh, if you want to use large, uh, large amount of uh, unnatural amino acid, you may think about our this methodology. So, yeah. So um, I have to thank uh, thank my collaborator and also supervisor, Professor Cheng, Professor Miguel Vergas, who is in ASIC, and also Professor Patrick Walsh in UP. And also I have to thank my small group, the students, and the fundings. So thank you very much.